let's begin with uh, Pomona College in California, where you did your graduation. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, it was in English. Yeah. And you had a specialization. I mean, you, yeah, your focus, your concentration was creative writing. Right. Yeah. And then you went on from there uh, to study filmmaking right. Right. at Columbia in New York. And how did that come about? Well, um, I, 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 it was mostly a very practical matter because I, I've always been writing fiction ever since I was a kid. Um, but then the question always came up, how are you going to make a living? You know, my grandfather once asked me, Bade okay, kya karoge? I said, writer banenge. Or kya karoge? <laughs> and my mother's a writer, so, you know, she's been writing way back from um, All India Radio days, uh, doing plays on Tourdarshan in Delhi. So I used to see the checks that used to come home. <laughs> <laughs> and it was pretty obvious even to me as a kid that it's not possible to make a living from that. So, and I've always been very passionate about film and I watched a lot of movies. So I thought, well, and my mother had by that time gotten into the industry in Bombay and she was having a very successful career as a writer. So I thought, I can at least get a job. There's an industry here and if not as a writer or director, I'll get something or the other will happen. Um, so I went off to film school and really enjoyed what I learned there, but I learned also pretty quickly that I'm not built for collaborative art. <laughs> that film is from the ground up from the first day, even at the level of the screenplay in a sense, you're thinking about other people, you're making the, the blueprint for somebody else's art, it's not the thing itself. And then as it happened, during the middle of film school, um, I found the biography, autobiography of uh, Colonel James Skinner in the library at Columbia, where I was at film school. And then once I started reading that, it was a pretty instant obsession with that man's life and with the whole um, arena of topics that that life suggested, you know, colonialism, the coming together of cultures, um, science, um, technology and all of that. So, and the way that I started imagining that story was obviously not going to happen in a film, or at least not going to happen in a film for me because it has magical events and it has cavalry battles and so the budget for that would have required <laughs> many millions and millions of dollars. Um, so I knew that was going to be a novel so I dropped out of film school halfway and went off and started writing that first book. Is there anything that you've learned from the movies or from uh, favorite filmmakers, screenwriters that you've brought to bear on your work as a writer or as a teacher? Very much, yeah, yeah. I mean, even in that year at film school, um, um, one of the classes that they they required us to take was acting, and I was very upset about that because I, I know I'm a very bad actor. I, I really can't do it. So I was like, okay, I understand. I want to take the screenwriting class. I want to take the directing class. Why are you making me take the acting class? It's really, uh, you know. I, and I argued about it with the with the establishment. They said, no deal. Everyone does it. You have to do it. So I go in and the guy who's teaching it as it happened was Brad Dourif, who is an, an amazing actor. Um, most recently, I think people might remember him from Deadwood. He was Doc. And um, he was also in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, for which he actually won an Oscar for Best Supporting Role. So suddenly you're in this classroom with this amazing artist and despite my resistance, what happened to me was that by trying to act, I saw the screenplay from the other side, right? What it means to try and perform somebody else's words, right? And also just understanding very clearly about an actor's motivations. What does performance need in order to actually work? And that made me see text and writing in a way that I had never understood it before, right? Um, and I think that sense of rhythm, that sense of um, acute closeness, and then, since then, whenever I've worked in film, um, economy, right, is, is so important there. Um, because as a prose writer, you get very used to having the internal monologue, the long descriptive landscape, you know, passage at your disposal to create mood and atmosphere and all that. But uh, in, 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 a, in a film, you know, that's the director's job. And directors hate seeing huge chunks of dialogue you know, <laughs> on a page, which as a prose writer you want to do all the time, right? And so that red line that crosses through your screenplay, it teaches you something about how to get the internal state of a character out into the world 
without depending on that kind of expository dialogue, right? And, on, and, and much more working with behavior, with action, as it were. Um, so I've always enjoyed, since then, I've always thought that there was a very educational process for me and it has taught me a lot. And I, I, every time I write, I, I go back to those classes with Brad and understand that how much that taught me. Yeah. Could you uh, cite an example or two from some of your work, either Red Earth, Pouring <laughs> Rain or you know, Sacred it, Games, where you sort of... Well, it's... it's I think yeah, Sacred I, Games I, fits in with, to, it, for me, Sacred Games yeah, fits yeah. in to a large extent with what you're saying. The yeah. fact that you could match that fast pace right. with the Dickensian, the huge novel, right, right. and still sort of keep people, I feel... Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that yeah. sense of rhythm and of narrative velocity, you know, right. that... that uh, I think that's something that I'm very fond of reading as well, right? So, so I love um, novels which which do all of these sort of various things that story can do, right? So that you have a lovely sort of literary depth to it, right? And the language and and the rhythm. But also, I like I love story, um, and so I think that's what, since that's what I like to read, that's what I tend to end up writing, you know, or at right. least trying to. Right. Um, and so I think that a large part of that comes from understanding of, of life cinematically, as it were, right? And it's been pointed out to me many times that your work's very cinematic, you know, it's very visual. Um, and in large part, that I think that's also because when I'm imagining or when I'm trying to get at the story inside my own head, it tends to come across in a very sort of three-dimensional visual sort of way in which the characters are moving. And then my job as a writer becomes trying to transport the reader into the same kind of three-dimensional experience. You know, and I think that's why possibly it seems like sort of physically filled up, right? The detail. Um, so all of that, and then I think, especially in Sacred Games, I think the visual vocabulary of Indian cinema and the emotional vocabulary of, of Indian cinema is something that's been very close to me ever since I was a kid, yeah? so. Um, I grew up, you know, my mother was a great movie fan and we used to get dressed up and Saturdays or Sundays we used to go to the theatre as a family and watch a movie and it's such a magical experience in those old huge theatres which mostly now no longer exist. Um, and you know, she was a <laughs> kind of strange mother, I mean, she. Uh, one day I um, stayed back from school and I went to see Lawrence of Arabia you know, with her in a matinee show. Same with McKenna's Gold, you know, all of those like sort of 60s, 70s big movies for, for Indians. Um, and she was just like, let me do that, you know, off and on. So uh, I, I think uh, trying to use and trying to depict actually in a sort of way reflect the intimacy that Indians have as individuals and as a culture and with the cinema and their sort of passionate relationship with it. That, especially in Sacred Games, became one of the big sort of parts of the book that I was very consciously trying to do, you know, catch that somehow. Right. 